Well, it all started with a waffle iron. Yeah, that's how the first pair of Nike shoes were made when Bill Bowerman created his inventive sole using the waffle iron. It's gone on to become a massive corporation that's touching all sorts of sports genres. In fact, it does $19 billion in sales annually, one billion of those in the golf business. Recently, we had a chance to trip out to Beaverton, Oregon to have a look at the Nike headquarters, the campus. This particular building, we'll go inside, of course, but this particular building was built specifically for our vendors. There's a whole bunch of conference rooms. There's an auditorium that has 700 seats, Italian leather covered, 700 seats, state-of-the-art sound system, etc. The Tiger Woods Center features trophies, pictures, and even a statue of the star golfer. So as you can see, this part of the building is kind of his younger days. Um, you know, it's some of his old, when he was still playing on the junior tour, playing at Stanford. And then of course we do have replicas. These are replicas of his trophies. When the center first opened, Tiger Woods was on hand to christen the building. I admit I don't play golf, but from what I understand, this is 18th hole Pebble Beach is what the box looks like. Normally when our athletes come, whatever their sport is, we ask them to engage in that sport. So when Tiger Woods was here, he was teeing it up off this box here. Um, his building opened roughly two months after the Lance Armstrong building. When Tiger was here, he actually did hit quite a few balls over onto the green. Um, and there's a marker in one of, a couple of the roughs where he did, the ball did land. The actual, the funniest part of the story is, so he's here, he's Mike, he's with Phil Knight, who's also Mike. They're chit-chatting back and forth, right? He starts ding in the building. And Phil's like, go, dude, break a window. And Tiger's like, I'm not gonna break a window. And Phil Knight's like, well, why not? He's like, we'll take it out of your paycheck. So he, he didn't actually end up breaking a window, but um, I know some of the maintenance guys at the Lance, and they found numerous balls on top of the Lance. And, um, and there were people that were down there, and they could hear the balls hitting the windows constantly. All the buildings on campus are named after athletes. The Nolan Ryan building features an amazing statue of the ball player. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff on this particular <laughs> sculpture. So what happened is when the sculptor was trying to get some ideas and inspiration of what he wanted to kind of put together, uh, he called Nike and said, is there a possibility that we can get one piece of memorabilia from Mr. Ryan to put into, incorporate into the statue? You can see there's old license plates and old baseballs, old beer cans. Meanwhile, Michael Jordan has helped build the Nike brand across the world. Well, a year and a half ago now, um, in the summer was Jordan's 25 year anniversary with us. Um, Michael Jordan does actually still have a office in this campus and he is contractually obligated to Nike until he, he turns 65. And he does have final say over every piece of his brand that hits. So if you see a shoe that has the Jordan logo on it, he has personally approved it and he does. He's here at least once a month spending some time with his designers. While there isn't a golf course on the Nike campus, there is a playing field where commercials are shot. We have two um, soccer fields, this of course being one of the two. This particular one is Regrind. Um, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with Regrind, but basically it's old ground up shoes. Um, and this particular field has 50,000 pair of shoes in it. And as you're leaving campus, faces of Nike athletes look upon you everywhere you walk. We have 297 of these plaques around campus. Even if someone potentially might even be an Adidas athlete at this point, if they were ever a Nike athlete, their plaque stays where it is. 